Welcome to a new year of Great Run events, and as ever at this time of year, we get underway in Scotland with the Morrison's Great Edinburgh Cross Country. The annual team event between Great Britain, Europe and the United States will be featured later. The first up, a men's four-kilometre invitation race. The 2014 European bronze medalist, Chris O'Hare! Well, O'Hare, as you can see, that bronze medal coming to him this season, but he's up against a real unbelievably tough field here. Four, the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games 1500 metre champion from Kenya, James, James Magut. Uh, and of course we saw him in Glasgow uh, winning the 1500 metres We're in the Commonwealth three, Games we'll last season. It really was. Champion, look how cold it is. I mean, they're jumping up and down, trying desperately to stay Bernard warm. But uh, Bernard Lagat. World champion over 1,500 and 5,000 uh, in 2007. Two, one of the greats, former champion, Kenyan, then the went to the United Olympic States and became an American champion, citizen. Kenya, and uh, Aspel Kiprop, a former winner, third last year, and uh, was beaten and by the American. One, the and uh, the here comes uh, the, USA, the defending Garrett champion, Heath. Garrett Heath of the United States of America. Can he repeat that here? It's going to be a tough ask, it really is. So. Well, this will be a real challenging uh, four kilometers, as, uh, as we will see. There have been several races on prior to this, so it's well muddied up underfoot. And you can see that O'Hare has taken on right from the, from the start. Kip Yego on the left of the shot, uh, just uh, there, the Kenyan, the steeplechase, uh, junior steeplechase champion, world junior steeplechase champion is there as well. And, of course, as always, uh, Asbel Kiprop just sitting back. And look how they're trying to find the solid part of the course now. And that, I think, is, uh, is really good. Career in that all yellow in the lead. But there's the, the course. And uh, around uh, Holyrood uh, uh, Park itself. Arthur's seat as part of that. St. Margaret's Lock there for you to see. And uh, it uh, is, extends to this Haggis Snow. And, and it really is a tough final part of the first lap, the uphill. So Retzenheim, the American, um, he's now 32, is in second place. Heath in third place. In fourth place uh, is Tom Lancashire. And then O'Hare in fifth place. There's Thomas, you and Thomas sitting in behind him. So. We'll give you the overall positions after the first lap. O'Hare looked dropping back a little bit. The um, Commonwealth bronze medalist, a European bronze medalist, and over 1,500 metres. And look how it's really taking its toll on some of these athletes. Ritzenheim in second place. And that really is uh, down to five athletes there. And uh, that is Longisiwa, Thomas Longisiwa. I believe, in that orange strip in uh, fourth place, and Lancashire just as they come up that hill. And I said it was undulating, and there are one or two uh, uh, steeplechases in the big races uh, today, um, over eight kilometers. I mentioned uh, Birech, he will be in that race, and they'll be very interesting to see. Kiprop, Heath, Ritzenheim, Longest Seaware, and Lancashire then confirmed in that uh, leading group. And we will give you a time after the first lap, although this is not about time, this is about racing. And uh, this in the 26th year of uh, these uh, races means that uh, there have been so many super athletes participating in the race over the years. And uh, Kiprop, Kipchoge, as I said, in recent years, and, uh, of course, some of the British competitors early on before the race has developed into a race that has attracted the Africans and the Americans. Gad Heath looks good. Korea, that looks like Korea. Now then, here we go. We've got the coming up the first lap finish. Kiprop, Heath, Ritzenheim, Longesiwa and Korea it is. Ahead of Lancashire now. Thank you. 
Heath is really looking good again, isn't he? He's determined, he enjoys this part of the world. Ritzenheim ahead of Lancashire and uh, Longest Sea were behind him. So that's how they're lining up now. Look at the lovely stride length of uh, Asbel Kiprop, the tall, elegant figure of the uh, twice world champion at 1,500 metres. But Heath, the defending champion, looking good. He's a former champion, twice Minnesota state champion in Nordic skiing, and that takes some strength endurance, I can tell you. So he's not only fit, he's not only strong, he's got strength endurance, he's got speed endurance, and he is getting away from this, along with just fat uh, Korea of Kenya, uh, with uh, Kiprop in third place and looking, well, just ahead of Fritzenheim, isn't he? So that is this race is really broken up very quickly but the defending champion is looking absolutely superb he is absolutely flying and that's the world cross country champion in second place korea obviously those distances much greater and, uh, and there would be a, a more temperate pace but heath has come here uh, to defend this title in the most serious manner and he's seen off some of the world's greatest athletes, he really has. Unbelievable, unbelievable. He came here to Scotland last year and was a surprise winner. This year, he's not a surprise winner because if this holds up and nothing seriously happens, if he doesn't fall and nothing happens, then my goodness me, it's going to be an emphatic win. And as the favorite and defending champion, career in second place, Look at the turns. The turns are difficult. You've got to really be on your on your game here. And remember, as I said earlier, the 15 millimeter spikes will help to hold the form. A little look over the shoulder from Korea, but uh, really at this, uh, we are coming into the final stages now of this race, heading towards the finish now. Last year he won in 11:51. I'm not surprised it's a bit slower this year. The conditions are pretty tough, but Gareth Heath. The defending champion wins the uh, 4K race here and wins it well. He wins that in dominant form ahead of the World Cross Country champion, just that career. And look at this for Ritzenheim coming through into third place. It is indeed. And that's wonderful stuff. And Kiprot this time fourth. But that was a brilliant, brilliant run indeed by Garrett Heath of the United States. So there it is, Gareth Heath of the United States from Japheth Korea of Kenya, Dathan Ritzenheim of the United States with Kiprop of Kenya in fourth place. I mean, you always picture the win when you're visualizing the race, but uh, still comes as a surprise against a field like this, you know? Um, anytime you tow with these guys, anything can happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, having that much talent out there, you just gotta try to hang with the pack as long as possible, and if you got a chance, go. Well, earlier in the day, the two junior events that contribute towards the overall match score took place. In the men's six-kilometer race, the Italian Kripa, the European junior champion representing Europe, took the honors. Whilst in the women's four-kilometer race, McKenna Morley of the United States came in first, meaning that the United States led the team event going into the senior races. And the match scores at that point were significantly in favor of the United States of America. The Collie taking it on then. Holson is there, Hay is there, Derek is uh, behind him. There's uh, the tall Italian, about 10th place there. There's, Bas um, there's the Abeza Bay, the European bronze medalist. And I would expect uh, the second half of the race to be really testing. I mean, eight kilometers in these conditions um, with the wind as strong as it is and the hills as undulating as they are, and uh, it's equally difficult uh, running downhill as well. You've got these quick turns and twists, and you've got to be very careful. We've already had one faller. But for Holson to take on this race this early, that's uh, pretty good. He's coached by Paul Rodden, and uh, so he's a 14, 24, 5,000 metre man, so there's a lot to come. He's 21. He's got a lot more to find, really. And uh, soon the attention will be for the British athletes for the English athletes, the English national cross countries, end up with the Scottish nationals and, and uh, so on. And the Americans going back to Boulder, Colorado, 
to see who will go and represent them at the World Cross Country Champion Championships. Ferris is there as well, uh, Forrest rather. He was the North, Central American and Caribbean Cross Country Champion in 2013. He's a steeplechase as well. He got a silver medal in the NCAA. We're just completing that second lap here. So we'll get uh, we'll get the an update now on the thing. There's Holson, Collie, Derek, Hay, uh, Connor, Forres, Nasty the Italian, Riley and Taylor. This is the second 4,000 meters. Derek leads, Hudson in second place. Holson in second place. There's the scores after two laps. USA 35, Great Britain 53, Europe 89. The USA with the two uh, junior races having been won. They've got a superb margin set by the juniors here today. And we'll have a look in a moment, I would think, at the overall match standings. Look at that. 65 to 129 to 153. But Great Britain going well. Ahead of Europe on this occasion. Remember, Great Britain were the champions last year. They won with a, an overall score of 159 ahead of Europe on 172 and the USA 203. But uh, this now looks to me as though it's beginning to open up a little bit of a gap, which uh, really Derek is still there, the defending champion. Garrett Heath has already in a four-kilometer race shown that it can be done twice. And uh, Derek, of course, twice their cross-country championship. He's, he's a, a real class act over the country. There's no question about that. And uh, he's the captain. I don't know whether I've mentioned that already, but he is their team captain, the team captain for the whole lot. He captain the USA to silver medals in the World Cross-Country Championships, ahead of Kenya, incidentally, in, uh, what was that, 2013. So, he won their titles twice, actually, the National Cross Country Championship. And look at this, now it is opening out. Derek, here we go, from Riley. And it is... Uh, it's a Connor. A Connor, I haven't mentioned Connor, actually, thus far. Uh, Reed Connor of the United States. He was sixth in the U.S. Championship last year. But Derek and Riley ben now Jonathan beginning Taylor. to uh, show a clean Danny pair of heels. And behind Callum them Hawkins. Hawkins in those team is uh, Reed Smith. Connor. Now, Reed Connor, that tall figure, as the rest now. behind are well strung out. Now, remember, it's the top six, so Europe needs some people in. So Derek leads. Riley in second place. Oh, look at there, we've got the score after lap three, 27, 66, 87. That's for this event after three laps. We'll give you the overall team score uh, after the three laps. That's taking all the racing into account thus far. There it is, 57, USA, Great Britain 142, Europe 151. What a lead the United States have got here. But uh, Derek looks very comfortable, doesn't he? He looks, uh, there's hardly a look, that face, his body language is good, there's no tension in his shoulders, he's, he's in a control mode at the moment. Oh, a little slip, they've got to be so careful coming around this uh, corner here. That's Holson, I think, and that's uh, Johnny Hay. I don't think that was Taylor, I think that was Holson coming through there. If it is, then uh, Taylor uh, will have dropped away a little bit, we'll soon find out. This team race between the USA in red, Europe in orange, and Great Britain in white and blue. That is Holson looking very, very tough. And there's uh, Collie who's run very well too. So Holson, the leading uh, Brit at the moment, is having a good day. You have to say that uh, Charlie Holson's having a good day. And uh, Paul Roden's done well with him. He was 15th in the European under 23, and I would suggest that he's having a better day today. That gap is not uh, is not closing, I don't think. And uh, oh, look at that! Down into that squidgy bit and the bottom of the course. Hollywood Park, a wonderful, wonderful venue for cross country racing. And I guess that uh, when you consider this is the 26th year of the race, it's not the 26th year that we've uh, actually had the race uh, here in. Uh, 
Holyrood in Edinburgh because it start began in uh, January in 2005 that uh, when it was brought to this uh, particular venue although the race itself began with a Peter Elliott win do you remember him the 800 meter man in December 1989 so some big names have been in the past those on the track have uh, prevailed in this uh, race but uh, certainly I'm very impressed by Chris Derrick he really last year he looked good and this year he's looking even better there's a lot of encouragement around this course and it must be it must be good to see people coming the other way including Beza Pay, the European bronze medalist when you're moving in the opposite direction <coughs> so the, the time they will be approaching the finish soon. It's much slower than last year, but who, who worries about it? A little bit of a slip, but that looks to me as though Jake Riley is having a real go now. And is that gap narrowing? Jake Riley's going to have a go at Chris Derrick here. He's got his uh, throttle full down as they're coming into the final stages. The finish you can see, they can see in front of them. And I don't think that Jake Riley's going to have the legs, or is he? Chris Derrick looks over his shoulder and almost allows himself a smile. So Chris Derrick wins the race and defends his title with Jake Riley in second place. And that's a really good run by Johnny Hay. What about that coming through very quickly uh, for third place to overtake his teammate Charlie Holson? But uh, there you've got it. Derrick, Riley, Hay, Connor in that order. Chris Derrick then 25.31, doesn't matter about the time. Riley in second, um, Hay and Connor for America, then Charlie Holson. So the Americans one, two, three, four, five, six in the top 10. And that uh, is a very, very solid uh, bunching indeed. Cross country is kind of, it's struggling internationally right now. And I think that what it really needs is for the US and Europe and Great Britain to come back and start putting strong teams together. Um, and it looks like, I mean, you know, I feel like the U.S. right now is putting some really strong teams out there. Um, I'm really happy to be a part of that because I, I love this part of the sport and I really want it to thrive. The match score thus far, everything taken. USA 60, Great Britain and Team Europe three points apart. Now, how about that? Uh, with one race to go, the women's six-kilometer race. Europeans in there. This is a bunch and yet going into the second of the lap. Now, we will get a, a, a team situation here. And remember, the United States, one, two, three, they've got a lot there, haven't they? There's another two there and another couple back here. Remember, it's the top six, so just looking at... Uh, ah, here we are, the USA, 54, yeah, Europe, 59, Great Britain, 73, despite the fact that Great Britain have got two, girl, two young women, I should say, in that leading group of uh, half a dozen or so. Match standings overall, USA 114, Europe 204, and Great Britain. Remember, there was only, what, uh, three points between them at the last current match standing we had, um, and now uh, it's got a little bit further away. So there is a breakaway, isn't there? Goretzka, Nelson, Bates, um, Sokolenko, there's Kuhns and Bizarri. Look at this, two Europeans in that uh, top group, and that's very important for the for that close contest between Europe and Great Britain, for sure. But the Americans have got uh, a really good uh, leading group. And Nelson, it's the fifth year, as I said earlier, of this international challenge, and it's going from strength to strength, really. Britain in second place, Gebri in third place. So Great Britain from Europe, from Europe, from the United States, and uh, Gemma Steele is in a little bit of trouble. Now, whether she'll get another lease of life in the final state, in the final lap, she's taken a deep breath there as she came in. You sort of take a, a gulp just ahead of uh, Emma Bates now. Now, this is the end of the second of three laps coming in, so 4,000 metres to be completed. Goretzka, Britain, Gebri, and then Nelson. Look at this, one lap to go. You can hear the bell, 2,000 metres to go. And Gemma is struggling, and I don't think she's going to prevail today. 
She really is hurting. She's found this very, very difficult indeed. This a year in which she really has prevailed on the roads, on the country thus far, certainly at the end of last season as well. Very seldom headed, and only then by the African athletes. Goretzka is running out of her skin here and uh, is going very, very well. Europe now ahead of the United States, with Great Britain in third at 82 now. That means that Europe will have moved ahead of Great Britain in the overall situation. And there it is, USA 116, Europe 192, Great Britain 224. So, it's all changed in the 6K uh, race, and Goretzka, really, when you consider the way she ran in the Europeans in Bulgaria, before Christmas, you wouldn't believe it was the same athlete. I'm, she must have had a problem. She must have had a problem. She went into that race as a favourite and didn't perform. But she's such an articulate young woman. A father and former army um, officer, a significant army officer. And uh, really, she's so well spoken. She interviews so well and uh, is uh, looking as though she's getting away. Now, this is a big, big surprise. There is no question about that. Everyone here thought that uh, Gemma Steele would be the one to prevail here, but she's way, way, way out of it. And uh, I think I can see her way. She's almost, what, well, 150 metres behind now and has no chance whatsoever of winning this race. These conditions are as difficult as it gets in cross-country racing, I have to say. Has she done enough to stay away? I think perhaps she has now. She looks comfortable, doesn't she? She looks very, very comfortable indeed. Britain is a good sprinter, though. I have to say that Fionola Britain can sprint and has been a champion, just as Goretzka has. Gebri now in third place, the former Ethiopian. Well, I'm, pl I'm really pleased for the athletes as a little glance over her shoulder that this is the last race of the day because it looks to me as though the conditions are returning to the conditions of uh, 24 hours ago, which would have been unmanageable. But uh, Britain really is a good competitor, you have to say. And she's getting strong. Remember, she's had marathon mileage under in those legs as well from last uh, summer. And uh, this, uh, an early part of 2.15, the sleet is now turning to snow. It's all going from worse to worse in terms of conditions, I have to say. But uh, this, a very, very competent run. Look at that hill go, Amelia there, shouting from the side. This is the big, big surprise of the day, it really is. She has destroyed the majority of the field, and it looks as though she's going to beat uh, Fionola Britain quite well. Now, we're looking at uh, coming to, towards the final stages of this game. We're not concerned with times this year. We're not even comparing times. It doesn't matter. This is about racing. This is about getting your head down and really working hard. And Amelia will know that she's got to stay well away from uh, Fionola Britain because Britain does sprint and she can sprint. So that final stretch, there's some tired legs now and I'm not surprised. And that downhill gives her a chance to power away. But Britain will too. Look at her chasing hard. Fionola Britain knows that she can sprint, but this is the final stages of this race. She's coming in now, she can see the finish, and now, head down, she's not going to be beaten. Emilia Goretzka, a wonderful, wonderful piece of uh, running by this 20-year-old uh, from Great Britain in this senior race. She comes home to win it, and that will be the most pleasing Christmas, New Year's present that she could get after what happened in the European Championships. Britain, Fionola Britain, wonderful captain for Europe, plays the captain's role, second in this race. And that's a third place for Gabriel. So, what a race that was. Emilia Goretzka, 21-26, forget the time. Britain, second, Gebri, third, so Europe, second and third. There it is, Team USA, that's the final match scores. 121, Team Europe, 189, and Team Great Britain, 223.
I came away from last month from the European Championships um, pretty heartbroken from the performance I had. So the main thing was to refocus, pick myself up and just battle it on and have a good performance today. And that was the main aim. So it feels absolutely amazing. There's so many fantastic girls out there today. So I was really trying to run smart and clever and just basically fight with all my heart because when you come away from a disappointing race, that's what you do, you just fight with all your heart. Well, next up for us is the Great Ireland Run in April. Well, don't forget to keep up to date on our website, greatrun.org. But from now, from Edinburgh, it's goodbye.